Welcome to the weekly duck migration forecast for the last week of January. This is my last forecast for the duck season. Um, given how dismal it's been for a lot of folks and how mild this winter was, I figured finishing the season off with a picture of my old Chesapeake um, hiding her face and laying inside the house might be might be fitting here. So I'll jump in. I do want to highlight um, in this episode how how bad uh, weather conditions are in general or non-conducive to to duck migration uh, they've been this season. So uh, I don't control the weather. I just report on it and report on predictions of, of waterfowl movement. I've also answered your questions throughout the season and gotten a lot of great emails at weekly duck migration forecast at gmail.com. I really appreciate all of the great questions uh, that I've gotten from uh, the viewers. So feel free to send me your questions uh, in general on waterfall migration, you know, waterfall nesting ecology, waterfall habitat management, harvest strategies, you know, all things ducks, all things waterfall. Um, I'm going to do a weekly duck migration forecast uh, off season episodes, probably bi-weekly here coming up. So that, that will depend on what number of questions I get from the audience in general, if I get enough quality questions that I can keep running this through. Uh, through the off season, um, but so if you're a subscriber, you should be able to get these uh, as we as we move forward. So the you know this stuff's hit the headlines this this year, right? I talked about Great Lakes ice cover. The blue is where we're at uh, right now. The the green is the median or you know about where we should be at this season. So this stuff's in the headlines of the news. Um, you know. Lowest lowest level uh, of of Great Lakes ice cover in quite some time. Uh, this is a, a I cut this image on the left from a page I follow uh, for ice fishing, which just shows three to five inches of ice near the launch in Shamo Bay. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, Shamo Bay is up in northeastern Lake Ontario on the U.S. side. Um, and you can see an image there on the on the right that I pulled from satellite photos. Uh, you know, Shamo Bay is not even uh, locked up yet. So when you start talking about economic impacts, you know, the rural communities that depend on duck hunters that stay at motels and eat at restaurants and things like that. You know, the, the folks at Southern Latitudes are hurting because of that. But folks that run, um, you know, snowmobile operations and, and on ice fishing and things like winter, winter activities are kind of hurting up north this year too. We're just getting going actually with ice fishing now. And uh, the, the Weather Channel reported on this last week, right? U.S. snow cover is, is the least expansive in, in 17 years at this point. So there's a huge swath of mid-latitudes um, without snow and with relatively mild temperatures. So I don't I don't want this to be depressing to folks. My comment really is if you didn't see ducks this year and you didn't do well, you're not alone. Um, and a lot of this really had to do with with weather. I mean, there wasn't other than a couple of cold shots. There really wasn't much to make birds move, unfortunately, this season. So the summer is really kind of dismal even now. Right. Temperatures are going to get near 70 degrees in Memphis and Charlotte, Memphis, Tennessee and Charlotte, North Carolina on Monday and Tuesday, respectively, you know, 70 in Memphis uh, on Monday, today, and uh, tomorrow in Charlotte, North Carolina. There's little to no snow uh, predicted for the coming week. Really, the cold center is right where I'm at. Um, it's hard for me to kind of write this forecast up because we did get a foot of snow in Syracuse. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I worked through the weekend and I'm I'm taking uh, part of today to go, to go ice fishing. It's only the second time I've been out, but we're pretty cold. And so that center of cold is Eastern North America and really centered around, um, you know, central New York region at this at this point. So the greatest WSI values of the season are just are just hitting the Great Lakes region. This is the longest stretch. You'll see it in the tables here in a second. This is the longest stretch where we've had uh, WSI values great enough to pre to to predict uh, mallard migration out of uh, the the region of like Lake Ontario, which is crazy late. So. Really, you know, I don't think that there's a lot more bird movement this week. Things are relatively mild. Um, I think, again, I've said this, uh, it, we get to this point of the season and it's a lot about, you know, how much food you got. Do you have good habitat? Do you have water? 
Um, and are you managing disturbance to the point that you can can still kill birds? Because um, the other thing that's hurting us is you'll see in the, the river gauge maps that dry conditions really continue to persist. So as I said, for, for mallard and black duck, um, in the, you know, heading towards the Mississippi flyway, if we look towards Ohio and Tennessee, there's not a lot lighting up blue there. Um, pretty, pretty warm conditions. Don't expect a lot of action um, in that part of the world. Uh, but here in Syracuse, we're, you know, our WSI values finally went off the charts where I'd say that, you know, our last of our mallards should be getting pushed, pushed out. That place I showed you, Shamo Bay, I've got a friend who works up on the St. Lawrence River and said that the mallards just showed up on the river, which pretty much means they just got frozen out of spots in Canada. They just got frozen out of smaller uh, water and big, 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 bigger lakes, and now they're on the flowing river. Um, this cold shot should move. If anything, you know, mid-latitude folks will get uh, in the Atlantic flyway, we'll get a shot of mallards. Some of these birds do move towards the Mississippi when they leave uh, the east. So... There is opportunity for some folks, um, I'd say like Southern Ohio, uh, Kentucky to possibly kind of pick up some birds um, in the coming week. But other than that, I don't see a lot of action here for, for mallard and black duck movement. Pintails, um, you know, I, I've had Columbus on here for a while. I'd, I'd say they're pretty well froze out of that part of the world, but in the Mississippi flyway, there's not really a good reason for them to move based on weather. Atlantic Flyway continues to keep showing up spotty blue stuff. So, you know, there could be some trickle movements of pintails. But my sense is these are probably events that most birds are are kind of sitting out. Um, you know, Charlotte, North Carolina, after being, you know, in the North Carolinas, uh, or North Carolina, sorry, um, after being really, really warm early in the week, does cool off midweek. So there's possibility for some small movement. But again, food, water disturbance are your keys. And this is dismal, right? Even when we go to Gadwall, um, next most susceptible duck to migration, at our most southern latitudes, we see red where, you know, these birds aren't even going to be moving out of those areas. So I'm really thinking that um, things are going to be, you know, kind of stalling this week. So take your time, pick your day um, that you've got time and, and get out with, with friends and family and enjoy it. Um, I'd say just, you know, avoid over hunting spots the best you can. It's kind of hard last week. A lot of people want to go, 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 but um, try to give places a, a day of rest. Right, you know, even Shoveler, uh, are one of our more sensitive birds, um, has reds showing up at, at the latitude of Memphis. And, you know, so it's going to be any movement, maybe, maybe green wing, teal, and, and wedgeon. But I'm, at this point, birds are pretty much where they're going to be and there's just a lot of shuffling around um, that's going on at this point so again uh, not the end that I wanted uh, polar vortex disruption didn't really send us what we what we needed and um, you know it's always there's always there's always next year so everybody uh, you know keep your chins up and hope folks had a good season the river gauges too are you know a little bit dry here um, through the um, you know mid latitude regions and the you know the mid Atlantic really kind of started to dry up a little bit uh, that with a cold shot you know I think if anybody might see new birds uh, North Carolina South Carolina for you know other dabbling ducks other than mallards and blacks black ducks and then you know, some mallards trickling into the kind of the Chesapeake Bay region um, out of out of northern latitudes. But in the Mississippi flyway, I don't I don't see a lot going on. Um, and the the dry here, you know, is really probably hurt, continuing to hurt a lot of folks hunting opportunities. So anyhow, uh, again, remember, you know, I'm going to try to do this biweekly off season episodes. And so email me your questions at weekly duck migration forecast at gmail dot com. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're kind of new to this, go back through the episodes. Um, we cover a lot of unique questions at the beginning of each episode. So go ahead and skip through them. I'm going to work this week at also adding descriptions to them. So it tells kind of what topics we cover in the questions section as well, um, rather than just, you know, the, that it says it's week such and such and week such and such. I'm going I'm to try to add descriptions to the each episode so you can look through them and see 
um, you know, what what topics we're covering. So I really appreciate everybody tuning in. I appreciate all the really great questions by email. Uh, I appreciate all the positive comments about enjoying uh, the forecast. It, it, uh, it's been fun to bring to you this year as, you know, the first time we've done it as a YouTube channel. So really appreciate everybody and have a, have a great last week. Be safe out there and shoot straight. See you soon.